thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Winvest. And I'm here today to talk about day trading. I day trade. I day trade the market, and I've been trading now for about eight years. It took me about three years to create my own system, and during that process, I lost money in the market. And I had another job. I had a full-time job. I kept my full-time job while I was trying to figure out a strategy that I could make money. Because when I first started out trading, my goal was to quit my mortgage job. I didn't just decide I wanted to trade to make extra money. I really wanted to find a new career. This was back in uh, 2008 when the mortgage industry was turning. And I said, you know what, i got to find something else to do with my life. I need a new career. And lo and behold, I had met up with someone in New York that day traded. And I thought, gosh, you know, maybe I can do this thing. Of course, when I started out, I thought I'd read a couple books and candlesticks and and figure it out myself, but it just didn't turn out that way. Trading is one of these things that it is can be very lucrative, except for the fact that it also can be risky, because if you don't know what to do, you can lose money. But if you know what to do, you can make money very easily. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. And so one of the most important things that I talk to people about is, if you really want to do this for a career, you've got to be serious about it. And you have to take, therefore, learning what to do seriously. And most importantly, what that means for me and the people that I talk to and teach is, is, the, is a strategy. Now, the strategy that I trade is gaps, and we're going to talk about that today. But if you trade or you want to trade for a living, then you have to have some kind of strategy, some kind of strategy that works consistently or you will not be successful. And I do trade the U.S. stock market. I like U.S. stocks because they're very volatile. They have a lot of momentum. And that's how you can hit these kind of numbers where you're making like $1,000 a day. And that's on average what it is to make $20,000 a month because there's about 20 trading days in a month, give or take holidays. So if you would like more information, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. But the fact is that you can make real money in the market. Even $2,500 a week, which amounts to be 500 bucks a day, is over 100 grand a year. And that's real money. That's enough money to do this for a living. It's really about, like I said, doing it consistently. A lot of people that trade have, have days where they win. They have days where they're up money. But then also they have days where they lose. The idea is not to lose that many days. The idea is to win consistently. And also the idea is not to do anything when something doesn't set up. For example, today I did absolutely no day trades. I didn't do any day trades at all. Nothing met my criteria to do anything today, so I didn't, okay? Someone is saying, what is the starting capital that you need to make $1,000 a day? As far as your risk unit, you need to be able to risk four to $500 per trade. So most of the stocks that I trade, for example, are between a $5 and about, I'd say, a $50 price point. So you use leverage or buying power you get from the broker to day trade stocks, but per risk per trade, it's four to $500 per risk unit in the trade that you take. So I am not trading very expensive stocks. So you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars even in buying power to do it because I'm mostly shorting stocks and you're getting leverage from the broker. Now where you open up an account, whether it's a proprietary day trading account or retail account depends on the leverage. For example, a retail account gives you four to one leverage. If you have 25,000, then you would have 100,000 in buying power. That's plenty of buying power to trade my method. If you have a prop account and you open up a prop account with $5,000, you can get $100,000 in buying power. That's more than enough to trade my method. But per trade, you're going to need to risk about four to $500 per trade. Okay, does that make sense? So it really has to do with where you open the account, Tim. Uh, what is your risk percentage? What do you mean about the percentage? I don't know what you mean by the percentage, Michael. Uh, Jay is asking me, if I make a quarter of a million annually day trading stocks, why do I need the income from teaching trading? I never said I need income from teaching trading, number one. And number two, I want to make millions of dollars. So uh, for me personally, I teach, I run a live trading room, and I day trade. And I'm also going to have a show on the internet and a show on television. And I'm going to make money from all of those things as well. So <laughs> I want to make millions of dollars. In fact, I plan on becoming a billionaire someday. I'm very young, and I'm certain that that is going to happen for me. So yes, $250,000 a year is a good amount of money. But quite frankly, I live in Manhattan. That barely pays your rent. 
So I hope that answers that question, Jay. Um, let me just see here. Are you buying options as well or just stocks? I am doing options too, but sporadically. I'm not doing options every day. I am day trading every day. I only do options if I see a setup that I like. I'm not day trading options. Uh, you meant risk ratio. I'm looking to make three times the amount of risk per trade. So if I risk, for example, 100 bucks, I'm looking to make 300. My risk is about $1,000, $1,500 per trade, but that's an advanced risk, and I've been doing this for eight years. And you don't need to risk that to hit the 200 some thousand a year mark. So in order, we're just talking today about making you know, 1000 bucks a day. You only need to risk four or $500 per trade to do that. So you will have some trades, if you risk 500, that will make 1500. That's your goal. Some you will make five R's. Some you only will make one, but it averages out. Does that make sense? It averages out to be three. I do not have a track record on my website, Brian's asking, but you can email me if you would like a trading room trial to come in to see my calls. And you can also ask me for referrals if you want to see them. Uh, what prop firm would I recommend? Dan, I can't even really recommend anyone specifically. I think it's something where you really actually have to check into it and do your due diligence yourself on what firms you want to go to. I, I, I don't align myself really with any particular broker, if, if you want me to be honest. I've never done that, and I think it's up to you to do your homework and what broker to go to. Everybody has a different deal out there, and, and I'm not a broker. I, I run a trading room, and I, and I teach people how to trade my method, but it's up to people really to check into the places to go. And every place offers a different platform and different commission structure and different leverage. You've got to talk to the place specifically. All right. Uh, all right, we're getting a lot of questions here. Let's try to get going here, and then I, then I will look at some of the questions. So the point I'm trying to say is that you have to be consistent. Okay? And there's billions of dollars in the market, therefore the idea of making $1,000 a day really isn't that much money when you think about how much money is in the market. The key to day trading stocks, though, really, or, or anything, anything you do, okay, futures, whatever, Forex, is to have a system that's reliable. And more than that, it really has to make sense. And I think my system has a lot of common sense to it, and I'm going to explain to you why. And this has to do with the success or failure of what you do. Intellectually, you have to think, why am I taking this trade? Okay, you have to think about it. Do I have 100% conviction that this trade will work or not? In other words, if I'm buying the stock, do I believe that the price is going to move higher on the day? If I'm a day trader and I'm going to buy the stock, the price of the stock must continue to move higher in the day. If I buy it and I don't believe it's going to move higher, it doesn't move higher, I will lose. Or in the case of shorting, if you're shorting a stock, you have to have 100% conviction that the price will drop underneath where you're taking the short position. Okay. Otherwise, why are you taking it? You have to have a system that makes sense and works in the correct directional bias. Now, when I mean directional bias, what do I mean? I mean a system that determines or can predict who's in control. Because who's in control of the stock is actually what's going to move it higher or lower. If people are buying something, then it's going to move higher. If people are selling something or shorting it, then it's going to drop lower. This Again, this sounds like common sense, but the bottom line is a lot of people don't think about this. And you got to get in the direction right if you're doing it. So you need a system that offers consistency. Gaps tell you where the big money is going to know how to trade it correctly for consistent profits. And again, this is what I do. And I'm going to show you charts in a minute. But the main reason why traders are so all over the place with the results is that they lack consistency. You cannot go long short the same stock in one day with conviction because there's only ever one person in charge on any given day, period. Okay? Who is in charge? On whatever given day you're trading that stock, for example, you can't have it be dual control. It's only one person in control at any given point in time. So that's why you have to be able to predict the control. If you can predict the control, you take the trade in the direction of the control. And again, this means is it a long or a short? Most people lose money trading because they're getting in trades in the wrong direction. I know this sounds very simplistic, but the fact is it's true. So common sense says, look who's in control, find it, take the trade in that direction, okay? Now, when I say control, I mean in control of the money, and it's something I call power money, because power money moves stocks. Now, the reason that I do gaps as a strategy is because gaps are made with big money or power money. Yes, I am going to show examples of trades. 
Uh, someone's asking me that. So don't worry about it. We're going to get to that. Now, who is in control? I don't know where the spy is at right now. Somebody right in the room. Tell me where the spy is at right now. I don't have my charts up live. It's 1227. But the spy yesterday, okay, this is on a 15-minute chart. We're on, this is March 1st, okay, rally, okay, and gapped up. Now, what is a gap? For those of you that don't know what a gap is, it's the difference between the close of the stock, and this, in this case, it's a SPY, it's an ETF, but this could be anything, it could be anything at all. It's just a chart where something's gapping. So it's the difference between the close and open. So, for example, if the SPY closed here at 193.60, or whatever price this is, and opens up here and gaps up to 195, that is a gap up. So it's the difference between the close at 4 o'clock Eastern time and the open. U.S. stock market closes at 4, opens at 9.30. So between here and here is a time difference where the markets close and stocks and ETFs gap. Okay. So that's what a gap is. Now, you can do bullish gaps or you can do bearish gaps. I prefer to short, but in any event, the SPY gapped up. So this was yesterday on the 1st. You could have looked at this gap, and then you're trying to determine who's in control. If you determine that the control is in the direction of the gap, which it was a gap up, you will go long the SPY, which is exactly what I called in the room yesterday. I went long the QQQs, but I did call the SPY and the Qs. I did the Qs. Here is the long trade in the market from yesterday, and it actually went to the dream target. Okay? It actually went to the dream target yesterday. So who was in control yesterday? The bulls. The bulls were in control. All right? Uh... Hold on, I'm getting just so many questions. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, why don't we do this? Let me, I, I can't keep up with all these questions, actually. Let me try to get through the presentation. I'll try to get through the questions at the end um, so we don't get too far behind here. I think we'll have time to get to everything. I'll, I'll scroll back. Don't worry. So anyways, the bottom line is to, uh, yesterday, the control, okay, was in the direction of the bulls. So if you can figure that out before 9.30, before all of this transpires and happens, then you would buy the SPY, or you could have bought the QQQs. Either way, you would have been looking beforehand, because after the fact, it doesn't do any good. Not that you couldn't have gone long late yesterday, money you could have, but it's the idea that you want to get in as soon as possible, and you're looking for the control. So I have a method, a criteria that I look at. It's a checklist. You know how pilots have checklists, surgeons have checklists. I have a checklist. It's a 26-point checklist to look for who's in control of the stock on any given day before the open in the gap. In the gap. I'm looking pre-market or post-market to see who's in control ahead of time in order to determine which direction to be able to take the position. So if I can determine ahead of time that it's going to be a long on the day, I will watch the stock and go long. How do I determine that with a checklist? So it's just like any other thing you do. You say, well, I'm going to get serious about this. I want to know exactly planned out ahead of time before I trade, before the market opens, what I'm doing. I need something that can help me tell me where the control is. My checklist, my 26-point rating system, tells me where the control is. Now, for example, if I'm looking at a bullish gap, and I rate the gap, and it doesn't rate good, then, then I'm not going to go long it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm shorting it, but it tells me that it's not a solid control. It's not a good, solid, uh, bullish control. It might be a mediocre control, in which case then it might be 50-50 either way. You want a solid, solid control to take a long and a solid control in the direction to the downside to short. So... My system has a niche because I'm looking for really what is large institutional money because that's what moves the market. That's what moves stocks. That's what, how you as a person, as a trader, can make $1,000 a day because you'll never make that kind of money trading stuff that doesn't move or have institutional pushes. Now, I don't trade penny stocks. I'll never trade penny stocks. They do not move enough for me, and the size that you have to take in them to make this kind of money is insane. But huge hedge funds and institutions are not buying stocks like that. What are they buying? The market. AEO, for example, which has earnings out today, or they're selling it. Amazon, Google, Apple, Facebook, okay? Institutions invest and buy in companies or sell their positions, their long positions in companies. And as they do that, they create a gap. Now, there's gaps every day. 
you just don't know how many gaps you're going to get in any given day, but there's lots and lots of gaps in any given day, and therefore, it's another idea about the consistency. You can find something most days. Now, again, today there were gaps, but it didn't, nothing met my criteria, so I didn't do anything. But you never know until you get up on the day. That's also part of the idea about being strict. Now, getting back to what I was saying, gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it. Gaps are an event. It's an event that happens actually in a chart in a stock. An event like something happened. That event could be could be an earnings report. That it could be uh, somebody got on TV or CEO or somebody and they announced something or a new product. I mean, it could be any one of a million things that makes a gap. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency. Like, for example, if something's gapping down, it's, it's a sense of urgency. Oh my gosh, what do we do? What do we do? People are selling it, okay, for example. And this creates an action that forces participants in the stock to do something, like sell it or short it or buy it. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gold and gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and money. And as I was saying, that's really what moves stocks. Uh, someone's asking, what time frame do I trade? I trade in the one minute chart. I trade in the one minute chart uh, most of the time. But you can, you can trade on any time frame. It's all the same thing. Like if you're trading Apple, Apple in the one minute, two minute, five minute, 15 minute daily, it's the same thing. It's Apple. It's trading at whatever price it's trading at. But I take my entries on the one minute chart. Uh, what about you left a, I don't understand your question there, Michael. What about you left a gap up but go down? I don't know what your question is about that, Michael. Uh, yeah, very little movement today in the market. Let me just scroll up here and see if there's. Yes, my method is good for the choppy markets. Why? Because I don't need the market in the stocks that I trade. Now, like I said, I went long the QQQs yesterday, but it's not like I trade the actual ETFs of the market every day. Every day I'm looking to pick a different company. I prefer companies because they have more momentum and people are more emotionally involved in companies like Facebook. Oh my gosh, we love Facebook. And then it has earnings, for example, and then people like to buy it. People care about companies more than the overall ETFs. It's not like people are in love with like a gold ETF. So I prefer to trade companies. So you don't need the market either way, in either direction, to do gaps that rate well either way. Okay? So therefore, in this time kind of market, it, it, my, my method is great because you can make money because it doesn't matter if you, if you get with the direction of the market or not, long or short. And also, I'm in and out of my trades very quickly in the morning. I'm usually done by 9.45, 10 o'clock. Usually, the market doesn't set its tone until after 10 o'clock. Many day traders don't start to trade till 10 o'clock or later. So you don't need to have the market directional bias right in order to make money trading my method. In the case of this year, where the market has seemed, like somebody just said, choppy, even though to me, actually, we're still higher, it's, it's one of these things where you, you may be getting pushed around all over the place if you're trying to figure out what the market's going to do next. It's challenging to read the market accurately every day. Even I get it wrong some days, although I do get it right a lot because of the fact that I'm reading the gaps in the market. I don't always pay so much attention to it, like 100%. I look at it. I look at it because I want to see what the market's going to do in the day, but I'm just doing my gaps. I might say, well, we're, we're higher today, therefore I'm going to take a quick short or something like that. That might be how I use the market. Or, for example, I might say, well, the market's going to go really, really big down today, and if I'm not short, then I might hold it longer. Okay? That, that's something different. If it took me three years to figure out my system, what would I do different if I had to do it all over again? What would I do different? I lost a lot of money at the beginning. I would have risked less money at the beginning. I, I'm very bright, and I thought, well, I'm going to be able to figure this out, you know, in six months. That wasn't the case. So going back, if I had to rewind everything that I went through of figuring everything out and my whole process and journey, I would never have risked the kind of money that I did at the beginning. And I lost most of the money that I lost at the beginning. 
I think that's true for a lot of people, but I really truly believe that I would be able to figure this thing out very, very fast. It did not turn out to be that way. There's really not that much out there about gaps. There just, there just isn't. Uh, there's a lot of things out there about how to trade a market, many different systems and strategies, but there's very few people that know how to trade gaps right. In fact, I, I would say that I'm one of the very few people on the planet that actually knows how to correctly trade gaps. No one has a system like mine because I made it up myself, so I own my system. It is very unique. It does trade with institutional money. That is unique. Many people are doing things like gap fills and all kinds of other stuff that doesn't work. And it's just, I just have a niche. Uh, I think that gap trading, if you want to go it yourself to figure it out, is challenging because there's many different types of gaps. And so then people get confused, and then as a result, they never have conviction in anything. I'm telling you, the only way to consistently trade gaps is to follow the institutional money. And at the end of the day, the consistency has to count because how can you do this for something if you're going to do it for a living if you're all over the place? You can't have big drawdowns in your account. It's great when you have huge up days. That's fabulous. But if you have umpteen losing days in a row, then how are you paying yourself? You can't live like that, and it's too stressful. Now, let's talk about this. Predicting events beforehand in the moment for profit. Here is my stock market call. So I predicted the market would do this yesterday. I've been predicting that the market would get over and above over this area for since the beginning of the year, really. Now, we fell here earlier in, the, early in the year. We fell, okay? We fell and broke, but we were never really in a downtrend. Now, how am I able to predict all of these things? Because I've been reading all the gaps in the market, the bearish gaps, the bullish gaps, all of them, to determine to be able to predict it. The market will make another brand new all-time high this year. I have no idea when. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know that we will. And it's because of the fact that I'm reading the gaps in the market. So this helps you, my system, for day trading, but also to be able to do long-term trades, swing trades, option trades. You can use it for so many things because you're just predicting the direction. Where you get in and the target has to do, obviously, with the time frame you're trading on, whether you're doing an option or whether you're doing a swing trade or whether you're doing a day trade. Okay? Uh, I'm not really necessarily looking at any specific volume. It's got to have volume. I'm not doing a thin stock. Okay, I'm not doing a thin stock. And in fact, I don't trade stocks that don't have at least on an average about 300,000 or 400,000 average volume on the day. Like I won't even do it at all, even if it has pre-market volume. Now I'm going to talk a little bit here about a short squeeze. This is what is which which really hasn't even happened yet. It hasn't even happened yet yesterday. Yesterday was just buying coming to the market. But this is what I'm seeing going to play out. And you can you can go and think about this and come back to me in a year from now and see if I predicted this right. But I'm here I'm telling you. This is what's going to happen. And this is what's going to push the market higher. Now what is a short squeeze? A situation in which a heavily shorted stock or commodity moves sharply higher, forcing more short sellers to close out their short positions and adding to the upward pressure of the stock. A short squeeze implies that short sellers are being squeezed out of their short positions, usually at a loss. Very important. A short squeeze is generally triggered by a positive development that suggests the stock may be embarking on a turnaround. For example, I'm talking about the market here. Although the turnaround in the stock's fortunes may only prove to be temporary, few short sellers can afford to risk runaway losses on their short positions and may prefer to close them out even if it means taking a substantial loss. Now. What am I talking about? Well, there's different levels here that are going to set up every level along the way in the SPY and the QQQs that is going to create two things. One is buying. That is already started to lift the market around yesterday. Yesterday was the turnaround day for the market. Okay, Not a short squeeze, but a turnaround day. Every single level that buying lifts, okay, like what came in yesterday was buying wasn't short squeeze, but it was buying. Every single level that lifts, what's going to happen is two things are going to happen. A, the market's going to get bought, and then B, shorts are going to get squeezed. This is what's going to create the market exploding. And I'm saying blow, because I mean the blow higher. And it's going to be very interesting to see it. I actually, last year, I predicted the market would continue higher. And at that time, I saw, I saw it. I saw that we continue higher, and I saw the buying, and I saw the power of money. I saw the power of money in the chart. But I never realized that people would start shorting this market because I didn't realize we'd start the year falling like we did, which we did, whether it was because of China or whatever, it doesn't matter, we fell at the beginning part of the year. But we held the uptrend, but people are actually short this market now. So people are actually short this market now, and now this is what's going to create the blow to get over the high faster and quickly and aggressively because it's going to have a short squeeze and the buy. 
Okay. Now, when I go back and say, you know, how do you do it consistently? It goes with the proper alignment. This is where the common sense, and you say, well, okay, I understand, Emily. So, you know, if I, uh, how can I possibly make money as a person, as an individual with whatever account size you have, which is nowhere near a, a, like a hedge fund account, how can I make money if I'm against the people in control? You can't. You cannot. You might maybe for a minute or five minutes or whatever you want to call it, a scalp or something, but in the long haul, you won't. The proper alignment has to be with the big money. This is so important. So you need to learn how to read that, how to read it and where is it. And this helps you to make good choices. Make good choices, find quality trains, and, and, and you use a system that can help you to do that. So my system tells you how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy and system that is profitable. Golden gaps are highly profitable because they focus on large momentum to trade, which comes in with the institutional money. What stocks should you trade? Stocks that gap and rate 20 points or more. So they don't have to rate 26 in total. They've got to rate 20 or more. That's the cutoff. Under the 20, I'm not doing them. So there were two stocks today that rated 19. So I didn't, I didn't trade. And then the 19, it's a 50-50 chance of working or failing. But it's not 20. And you trade the gap in the direction of a gap. So you're rating it as a gap up and rating it as a gap down. And then when do you trade them? I'm looking in the morning early. I'm trading them on the one-minute chart. And I'm trading them into the open when they set up and trigger. Okay. Now, getting back to what I was saying, who's in control? JC Penney had a gap. This was last week on Friday. Let's go over it. Stock closed here on Thursday night. Thursday night, the stock closed around $8.40, gapped up. Gapped up here at around $9.60 or whatever it opened. Now, she said, okay, fine. It gapped up. I'm going to rate this gap. I'm going to determine if this is a good long or a good short. Now what happened? It dropped, held, rallied, boom, look at it. And I clipped this from today. So do you see the follow through? You could have actually done this as a swing trade in here. And you could have bought it as a day trade here, and you could have bought it as a day trade here, and you could have even bought it as a day trade today. Actually, you could have bought it yesterday. You could have actually gone long the stock one, two, three, four days. Now do you see here how this idea of this gap fill thing just doesn't work? Why? Because the control is to the upside. The control is up. The stock closed. Now, this was an earnings gap. But like I said, it could have been for a different reason. The stock closed at $8.40. It's a daily chart. Down here, you can see the days. It's a daily chart. The stock closed here at $8.40. It opened the next day up $1.20. Now, look at the price point of JCPenney. It's, it's, this is, you know, this is a huge move for this. So the bottom line is the stock opened $1.20 higher. Now, now, you would have had to rate this. It still has to rate good per the 26-point system. But if it rates good, which it did, you could go long the stock. You wouldn't short it. Okay, you wouldn't short it. And I wouldn't short this either, even if it didn't rate well. Why? Because it still opened at $9.60. Does that make sense? I don't use any websites. Your platform will have a scanner that has the top 20 downs and ups of the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. It should have a scanner in your platform. If you don't have a platform with a scanner, you can buy a scammer. Okay. JCPenney is long-term bearish, but short-term in here right now, it's bullish. How can you say that it is not bullish right now? It's rallied for four days. You would not have made you would not be making any money if you entered this stock any day in the last four days to the downside. This is the whole idea of what I'm saying. Now the bigger picture, JCPenney is still in a still in a downtrend if we're going to go back like you know 10 years. But in the last week, no, this stock is strong. It's being bought. I don't know who's buying it, but somebody is. By the way, these are the kind of things, and again, I'm not a long-term investor. I don't I don't I know I don't read the earnings reports, I don't focus on fundamentals, but whatever was said obviously is getting a reaction that is creating buying from the earnings report. These are the type of things you see long-term investors buying sometimes. It could be in a downtrend for 10 years or whatever. Looks like, you know, I mean, at one point, I don't remember what this was. I think it was at five something, I think, or six something. Anyways, these are the kinds of things that long-term investors like, you know, Warren Buffett or people like him that have tons of money, hedge funds, whatever, they, they say, you know what, we're going to buy this thing. And then, then it starts to lift it and it starts to fix the chart. Either way, you could have been short the stock 
ages and ages ago and made money. I mean, it was down here at six. But would I enter this as a short here now? No, no. If you were short it, you were up already, you were out of it. And if I was short it and this happened, I'd be out of it. Do you follow me? So let's just say if I had shorted JCPenney at $35, and I've been in it since a long time, thinking it was going to go to zero, which at one point this looked like it was going to go to zero, but I would, I, if I saw a gap like this and this follow through, I'd be out. Do you see? And also, someone is saying about the gap fill thing, and I just want to address that, and then, then I'll keep going. There's no intellectual thought process in that terminology. Zero. You're basically just saying it's going to fill an area. There's an area above. Who's to say it's not going to fill that? There's an area below. They're just saying something's going to fill an area. There's no intellectual thought process about that. There's no thought process about that that you could sit down with an intellectual person, and I talked about this in a webinar Monday night. You could not have a meeting with someone that runs a Fortune 500 company or a hedge fund and say you're going you're gonna to advise them to short JCPenney into a gap fill. That person would look, like, look at you like you were crazy. You would get fired immediately and thrown out of the meeting. There's no intellectual thought process to that. Zero. Zip. My strategy, the rating system, is an intellectual thought process that looks at the daily chart of a stock to determine with the rating system who is in control, will it follow through on the live day, and will it follow through after that. And you can explain it by being bought or sold or shorted with institutional money. Uh, this, uh, this gap fill terminology, somebody just made up that name, it absolutely has no meaning. You're looking at a space to be filled. What about the space above? By the way, there's more space above in the stock than there is down here. So think about that. Again, this, this is, you got to get out of this trader mentality. This trader mentality is think like you are actually in charge of millions of dollars. Because if you ever want to make a lot of money in the market, then you kind of have to think like that. In fact, you do have to think like that. You have to think like that. It's just like somebody asked the question about making $250,000 a year. If you think like me, you're like, okay, $250,000 a year, I'm thinking like I want to make a million dollars a year. Do you understand? Like think outside of where you are at right now. If you only believe that you can make, first of all, if you only believe you can make any money in the market, guess what? You're going to lose. And you're probably losing right now if you don't believe you can make it. If you're scared of taking risk, or believe that you're going to lose and think the market is against you and that you can't possibly learn how to do this and that it's a racket, you're going to lose. Now, if you believe that you can make money, does that automatically mean you're going to win? No, no, not at all, not at all, because you still have to learn how to do it. But at least you're halfway there mentally to think that, that maybe you can that maybe you can connect with someone like me who is actually good with what she does and makes money in the market or any one of the other people that talked today that, you know, talked about all the things that they talked about that they do. You have to at least get halfway there in your mind conceptually. This trader mentality is not something that if you went to a meeting with a Fortune 500 company, they would, they would, they would never invite you back and you would probably get thrown out, okay? That makes no sense. Now, let's get back to the lecture. Here, stock on the live day. This was on the Friday. Look at the follow through here. This is a beautiful follow through. This is a 15 minute chart. Stock closed at Thursday night around, here we go, 8,040 some cents, gapped up. Gapped up here at around 965 or whatever the open was. Now, here, it came in. Again, someone said about the gap fill. This didn't fill any gap. This, here is 840. What's the low here? Nine. It came in a support held support and set up as a long, as it should, rallied, and continued, and it's continuing. Okay. See this? So the control, you can, you can very easily see it here, the control. And I think you can very easily see it on the, on, the, on the daily chart too. So this training is very lucrative because you don't even have to do anything but just read the directional bias right and take the entry and then you decide where you get out. You either get out of the target or you either hold to the dream target to get out of the day trend, to get out of it at 10 o'clock reversal time. But either way, you duplicate it over and over and over again. And like I said, I like to trade in the morning. For me, I, I personally, personally like to trade in the morning and be out and be done. But there are gaps every day that happen in the market. Here's another one. This is a short. This was, this was yesterday, and I 
I never thought that this would be lower like this. And actually, like I said, my bias was um, to the long side for the market yesterday. And I never thought this would continue, but this continued. I actually didn't even rate this. I should have paid more attention to this thing. This was the one back here. This is PTCT. Had a beautiful move. This is back at the end of February. And then a gap yesterday. Look at the follow through on this. High of this in here was around 17 something low. Look, this is, this was the, look. This stock lost more than $10 in a week. Actually, more than that, because we'll go back. This is before the original gap, $27.50, open here at $17. So first a gap down $10. This was the day I had seen it on this day back in February. But then look what it did after this. Do you see this? So a lot of people think, well, it's going to fill the gap. Or, or maybe after this bar, they think, they think after these two days, you see these two days here, you think, well, I can't go any down. I can't go anymore. It's just falling off the planet. It can't go anymore. Yes, it can. What do you think makes this sometimes keep going to basically zero? But you know what I'm saying? It's because somebody probably bought this in here thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to make a million dollars doing this. No, you'll never make a million dollars unless you're with institutional money or you get like a illegal you know, stock tip or something from someone saying that, PTCT or whatever is gonna gonna get bought or whatever taken over, you know. So why is my system consistent and reliable because of the power of money? And that's the gist of what I'm talking about all day today. Power of money in the market is created by institutions who set the tone for stocks move in the day, whether selling or buying. And if you become a specialist in defining what institutions are buying or selling, then you'll have a huge advantage in your trading. Power of money sets the trend, it makes the trend, and it changes the trend in charts. And that's why you've got to be with it. And again, this is common sense. This is so common sense, and yet people are thinking like traders. You have to think outside the box like a bigger person. If you are not trading on the side of power and money in the market, you will have a hard time seeing lasting and consistent success in your trading. You have to learn how to read and trade on the side of institutional money because they're the ones that move stocks and determine the directional bias. The easiest way to do it is to look at the gap, and then if it rates well, you trade it. And if it doesn't, you don't. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times, and even if you think it's not, it is. J.C. Penney is a great example because a lot of people probably thought that was a short because it fell into the open in here, and it wasn't. And I can guarantee you right now a million people got stopped out of this in here. Bye. Because if you did this here, you wouldn't have gotten out here. You wouldn't have gotten out here because you thought this was the target if you shorted it. No, it's a terrible short. It was a long. It is a long. The point I'm trying to make, though, is that the, the, the institutions, the power of money can come in so fast. It can just go, and that's kind of what's going to happen in the market. It's kind of what is going to happen in the market. It's just I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but that's what I was talking about, about this idea of the, of the short squeeze. Okay. Uh, let me just see where we're at. All right, why don't we do this? I'm, I'm almost through this here. Let me get through the rest of this, and then I'll answer all the questions, and I'll just scroll up. Okay. Someone was saying about the, the gap could be filled five years later. Yeah, exactly, or 10 years later. And what if you're down, what if you're down in the stock till then? I mean, can you handle holding through all of that? I mean, this goes back to the whole thing. It's like you're not Warren Buffett. You cannot stomach through holding in something for 100 years. That's, that's down, you know. You just can't. So to make it in this business as a day trader, you absolutely, absolutely, you just can't lose a lot. You have to win more than you lose. You have to make more on your winners than you lose on your losers. I use stops. When I put in a trade, it's a hard stop. It's a limit order. I risk a certain amount of money. If I'm stopped out, I'm down that amount, and that's it. I don't have an unlimited risk. The only way to consistently make profits is to have a fixed risk. It's the same with each trade. You put in a stop. You say, I'm either taking one trade a day or two. I usually only take one trade a day. And you have to also win more times than you lose. And that means you have to be right a lot. So this is where the idea of being very focused is, where you have the strategy and you have the checklist, and it tells you, I'm going to focus on this. And if it doesn't work, then I stop. And if I don't get the strategy, I don't do anything. And if I'm up, and then I take it off. Okay? You just can't have a lot of losers if you want to make money. Again, Going back to what I was saying, it tells you beforehand what's going to happen, okay? Yesterday, Amazon gapped up with the market. This is a gap up. You could have rated the gap on Amazon. 
had a huge, beautiful rally day in here. See it? Ran up yesterday, could have bought the stock long or bought an option in it. Here is another gap up that happened here. This was back the middle of February. Amazon gapped up on the 200 pair moving average, rally. You still have to read the gap. But if you know what somebody's going to do ahead of time, it can help you make money. And it doesn't matter if you do it as an option or a swing trade or whatever. It's, you, the idea is to be able to keep duplicating it over and over again. You want to duplicate your entries. You want to duplicate everything that you're doing for the profitability. I only do one strategy. This is another pitfall that traders have. They're like, well, I'm going to do this thing, and I'm going to do this thing, and I'm going to do this thing, and I'm going to do this thing. Then all of a sudden, they're doing 10 trades a day. And then, then all of a sudden, six are losers and four are winners, and they're down. I only do usually one trade a day. I only do one strategy at scaps. I prefer to short them, though sometimes I will go long, like I went long in the market yesterday. And I, I'm never in a long and a short at the same time. That's how my brain works. I'm, I'm never in a long and short at the same time. And, but this is how I'm able to have the consistency, again, the discipline. So I get up in the morning and go through the checklist, boom. And you can do it at night because sometimes there's stocks that gap at night. I just told you AEO is earnings tonight, it's going to gap. I don't know if it gaps up or down. You can watch it, see what it does, okay? But the rating system I have measures gaps for rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire trading day. That's your goal, okay? You want to get a move in it, a dollar or more. Remember I told you the price point is between 5 and 55 I'm trading? Sometimes I'll trade things that are more expensive, but generally I'm mostly shorting. The expensive stocks I'm usually going longer, maybe I'll do an option in them like Amazon. I'm also looking for big moves on the day, again, dollar or more, because if I have 5,000 shares and it moves a dollar and I'm short, that's $5,000, okay? I'm looking for a dollar or more usually. And I'm looking for early confirmation of the bias and a move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. because I like to get it out and most institutions are buying their positions into the open or selling them into the open, and this is true. Precise entries also with follow through and a good risk to reward potential. And, and that's really for me, I'm looking for three risk units, but not every trade goes to that. Some trades only go one and a half, one, two. Some go to five. But it ultimately comes down to correct trade selection. You've got to be so picky, so, so picky in what you're doing. Now, what if you rate five things and they all rate great? Fine, you could do them all if you want. I'm only doing one. But what if you find none? You do nothing. The key to get paid is to be picky, 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 find the right directional moves, do over trade, if you don't ever trade, it, it'll be really hard for you to lose money. If you think about it, you go back, if you've traded in the past, and you think about things you've done, the worst days you probably ever had is when you took too many trades. You take one trade, you're down, and you get upset. And you get upset, and you're mad with yourself, and then you want to chase that one. You say, well, I'll just make that one back. And then all of a sudden, now that one doesn't work, and now you're down two. Do you see what I mean? It's you have to be strict with yourself. You have to think like a professional. You have to think like you're working for a company, like a Fortune 500 company, and you're trading their money, and you have to make good decisions, and they have to be correct, and you have to take it seriously. And it doesn't even mean, this doesn't mean you're trading all day. Like I said, I'm trading in the morning. I'm done. I run my trading room from 8.30 to 11. 11 o'clock, boom, room's done. I'm usually out of my trades by 10, 10 15. And then I teach afterwards. It's, this isn't about trading all day. One of the nice things about gaps is you trade in the morning, and you're done. But... I'm saying that you, most of the institutions are taking their positions on and off into the open, so you really only need that 30-minute period to get the move, usually. And you must follow a structure. You follow the structure and you don't deviate. If you follow the structure, you'll make money. If you deviate, then you may not. And you only also do just one system. Now, that doesn't mean that if you do the system, you can do other things later, but get good at one thing. See, a lot of, another pitfall that people have is they say, well, I'm going to try this thing. And they run out and they do it, and they try it. And then, then they're not finding the success that they thought. It doesn't mean their expectations, or maybe they're down. Then, then they want to give up and do something else. And then they jump from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. And guess what? They get good at nothing. Now, at the beginning, when I started trading gaps, I, I, the first day I ever traded, I actually did make $5,000 in a trade. That was a gap trade. That was the first week I ever trade live money, live money, and then I saw the potential for gaps and decided to do it. But I did give money back after that and was losing then, and then I was back and forth winning and losing. But I'll tell you, 
that you have to be very focused and get good on one thing first because you only need really the one thing to make money. If you have one thing to make money, you don't need to do anything else. I don't need to do anything else but gaps. I, I, I could. I'm good at what I do now. I could do a million other things, but why? Why? And I'm also done every morning, so, you know, I like having free time as well. Now, someone's asking earlier about the points. I teach the points in my class. It's, it's a 16-hour class, so I couldn't even tell you today even if I did, but I, I, I have a class for that. But the points tell you where the money is flowing. Why does this matter? So you know what direction to take it. So what do you need to make trading work? You need to have a structure, a strategy. And for me, it's gaps. Now, this was car. This was one from last week. Stock closed up here around $30 and then gap down. You see the gap down here in the morning? Opened around 24 something. Okay? So you would get up in the morning and you would rate the gap. So first you have the strategy. Boom. It's gaps. And then you have a system to follow with rules for the picks. Only trade gaps that meet the criteria of 20 points or more. If there are none, you don't trade. Like today, I didn't. You take the gap in the direction of the gap, long or short. If it meets the criteria in the system, no deviation. You follow the rules. Not all gaps are good. It must meet the criteria. You also need a structure to enter and exit the picks. So even if you find the gap, and even if the gap rate's good, you still can't get in in the pre-market or the post-market. You're waiting until the live day, because guess what? It may not set up. So I teach in the class the entries and the exits. You still have to enter it. You have to enter it, and you have to exit it. And it has to set up, because you could have something that doesn't set up. So, for example, this was the SPY. This was yesterday. SPY came in, held, rallied, pulled back. Here you could have bought the SPY in here. You could have bought the SPY in here or here. You see, it really lifted over the high. But either way, even though you like this gap, you have to still wait for it to set up. What if this fell yesterday? It didn't, but what if it did? What if it fell? Even if it rated good, you, you don't do it unless it actually sets up as a long. So you still have to learn the entries. Now, a, another thing that traders do, too, is they will look for entries all over the place. They will look for pullbacks into support to go long everything under, under the sun. That has no strategy. You can't just buy anything in the support just like you can't short anything in the resistance. First, you have the structure, which is the gap. Then you have the entry. A lot of traders know how to do entries, but they're doing them all over the place in a million different things that make no sense. The reason you want to go long the SPY is because the gap rated good for the 26-point rating system. Then you still have to wait. Then you wait for it to open. Then it has to set up, and it has to set up by 10 o'clock. Okay? So a lot of traders know how to do entries, but they're doing them in everything under the sun. And then they lose money sometimes and make money sometimes and wonder why don't these work. Because you don't have the foundation. And the foundation is the strategy and the structure and the system, which is the gap. Number four, then, you need monetary goals. I mean, whatever they are. If $1,000 a day is your goal, guess what? If you're up $1,000 or more, you're not going to let it go back under $1,000 if your goal isn't for the day you're going to take it. You're not going to be up $1,200 and let it pull back to be, to be only up $300 if you just had your goal in for the day to try to make $3,000. You're like, well, I could get to the dream target today. Yeah, I could, but, but you have your goal in. You must be serious about this. If you're up, you're out. Okay. In the end, all it's about is booking money. This is very, very, very important. I'm looking to make three risk units per trade. I don't on every trade I take. Some will only make two. That's still good. Keep your losses low. You're making money, even if you're only making one or two risk units. But my goal is always three when I'm looking for the target. So if I'm looking at two or three things and I'm like, which one do I want to do? And they both rate well. I'm looking for something that has a target of at least three. And so the reliability in the system means really sticking with one thing, like I said. So, for example, if you had short a car last week, you would have done nothing else. You would have been up and you would have stopped. Okay. So is $20,000 a month in the market doable? Of course it is, for all the reasons I just explained, because if you're going with the power of money, you can make way more than this, but you have to be very disciplined. Now, let's go look at this for the setup, and I know people were asking about this earlier. So you ran in the gap in car. If you wanted to do it, it gap down. This actually went to some crazy number. It actually broke 22. It went to what I would have called the dream target. You know, normal number for this was 24. But here's the setup. So the stock closed up here, gap down, open, rallied, boom, short it. Stop over here. This is a one-minute chart. 
And actually, you see here, this is what I'm talking about. This is selling action. This is institutional selling action. You can actually count the number of green bars in this, it, it, it really, in an even an hour. From 9, 9.35 to 10.30, you can count the number of green bars in this stock. It's just really great example of huge selling action in a stock. And as you see depicted here by the by the, by the rev, here's another, here, look at this. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about too. So you had, the day after here was green. Would I ever buy this after this day? Absolutely not, no way. But do you see some, something, something did, somebody did. Somebody did because I probably think it's gonna fill the gap and go up here or something. This is a terrible long. All right, so here is the entry, it was 25.12. Risk was 38 cents or thereabouts. So you can size yourself for 35 or 40. I usually use five tens to size it. If you want to make $1,000 a day, your risk has to be 400 or 500 or around there. It has to be the same though on each trade. Target, this is not the dream target, 24 bucks. Profit, $1,344. This is not even holding it down. It won another two bucks. So you actually could have made another $2,000 plus. But again, your goal is in for the day. You're up the money for the day. Your goal is in. You, you, you stop, okay? If you held it to the dream target, you could have made $25.44, risking only $456, which is your goal for the week, okay? So, if, for example, if you're, if you're trying to make $1,000 a day, you're trying to make five grand a week. If you make $2,500 in one trade, for example, that's even one trade that's half your goal for the week. So that's why maybe one day you don't trade at all, two or three days you trade, one day you may get a big trade, three hours, one day you get a small trade, you see how it all evens out. Again, it's the idea of being consistent and chunking it out to get to the goal. Because you won't necessarily have something work like this every single solitary day to some dream target. Of course some of them do and you may hold it down past the number, but not always. See? So what helps with successful profits in the system? Money management. Money management helps a lot because you don't want to be up a lot of money and then give it back. You also, money management has to do with risking the same amount per trade and also setting for yourself exactly how many trades you're going to take per day and not going over that, not deviating. And, and I'm not saying you can only take one trade per day, but I'm saying in general, I only do one per day and you either have to decide and you have to decide before the day. And don't be afraid to take a stop. Some days you will have to take a loss but I use hard stops with a limit order when I'm putting them in. And you've just got to be very deliberate with your choices. I say conviction, but it's like I either have conviction in something to go long it, like for example yesterday with the market, or you have conviction in shorting something. For example, if you'd short a car last week. You can't have conviction in something as a long and short at the same time. JC is a great example of that too. You either have conviction JC is a long or that it's a short. And who's right? wherever the control is of the institutional money. So you've got to get the proper education to learn these things and you could teach yourself. You could go through the process like I did for three years and lose money in the market and try to figure it out or you can learn from someone. Either way, it's a serious business if you want to do this. Trading is serious and you have to take it seriously. And so you have to think intellectually about what you're doing and, and the point I was trying to make about that is there's no intellectual thought process with that that you could talk to someone about it. Having a stock being bought by institutional money, for example, JCP in the last couple of days, is something you can see in the chart, it's real, and you see the price action. And all of this is on the daily chart. So everything that I do in my system has to do with the daily chart. I'm always looking for gaps. It's the only thing that I do. And this is a chart here again of the SPY. I, again, I don't know what the SPY is at right now. But all of this that happened here has started way back early in the year. This is the beginning of the year here. You see here, we first got down at the beginning of the calendar year. This is in 2016. Look at where we were yesterday. We got over, this is a bearish gap that happened here. This was right, this is the first week of the year, okay? We got well over that yesterday. Do you see all of this drop that we had in January? We've almost 100% retraced that yesterday. We haven't 100% retraced it yet since the open of the year. We haven't gone uh, positive yet for the year. We need to be about 202 to be positive for the year. But, but we're getting there. Do you see this? So we dropped off quickly here. This was first two weeks of January. 
and we've we've almost a hundred percent retraced it and this is all the buying coming in or the power of money coming in and so I, I predicted this I predict this actually when this was happening and I kept looking every day just double triple checking myself because we actually came down here and we tested this I was interesting because I thought I thought gosh we cannot retest this again and I looked at this and I thought gosh if we retest this again we're gonna break it but but we're not going to and I want to point out something else here and then I'll, then I'll get to everybody's questions <laughs> the SPY is down two cents right now. What's the actual price, though, of the SPY trading up right now? You lost me, Brian. How did you lose me? Can everybody hear me? Uh, what are the best days of the week to trade? The best days of the week to trade, I'd say, are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mondays are the slowest. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now, look at this here. So go back. We're going back to the summer of 2015. I'm sure everybody, if you've ever, if you traded, if you were trading last year, this was, I call this the anomaly day because the market had a massive gap down on this day. And this is something I teach in the class too. I, it's called the stock swoosh. It's what I named my company. But anyways, the market gap down opened, swooshed that day, and then negated the swoosh. It was the most powerful thing I've ever seen happen in any swoosh or even in the market. And it was so powerful that I call it the anomaly day because we may never see anything like that again, actually. And to see it in, the, in an ETF was extremely unusual. Now, going back to what I was saying, this was on the 24th. The prior day, was that on the 24th? Yeah, I think it was the 24th. And it was the prior day here was the 21st. Now, this actually was a gap down. So this day here, do you see this? This was a gap down. This happened August 21st. Go over here. So do you see where we started the year? So going back to what I was saying earlier about the sh idea of the short squeeze, people have shorted the market here. Now, I know we pushed over here, but we didn't go anywhere last year. Do you see here, people have shorted the market here, and also people shorted it here into the open, and this was the same level. This was in the open of the year, I mean. So this was a gap down. This was the beginning of the year, the open of the year. This was over here from August. This was the day before the anomaly day, the day before this huge crash. Actually, this was a, I mean, this was a down day here, but this was really the crash. Anyways, look at this. So do you see here? So people were short the market here, and then this happened here at the beginning of the year, and then people shorted the market here because it came down to here, and then here's where we fell, and then people were short. Now, we're not over this yet, but this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what's going to happen. I'm predicting to you now, based on the gaps, I'm predicting, I'm telling you, there's going to be a short squeeze over 202. So first of all, buying's coming in, or we wouldn't have had the buying in here, and we wouldn't have had the lift for the last two weeks. But once we get over this number, you're going to have the shorts getting squeezed. And the buying is going to lift it up there in the first place. Now, I don't know when that happens. I don't know when it happens. But that is it. Do you see it? And, and, I'm, and I'm predicting all of this because the gas is so powerful. Because if you didn't know how to look at this right, you would think we were lower. You would think that we rallied into the resistance. Okay? You've got to create a plan of action to achieve your goals. It has to be something that makes sense. I, I hope that the things I said today make sense. So I do teach a class, as I said. It teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power, money, and charts. The course teaches how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction, because that's how you're going to make money. It also teaches a proficient and advanced way to read charts, focusing on technical analysis and gaps. And the course teaches how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. And you can really make a lot of money trading if you know what to do. I mean, I'm just using here this idea of making $1,000 a day because a lot of people want to be able to make that kind of money in the market as a stepping stone for something bigger, but really that's what it is. And you really just have to start somewhere. You don't have to make $1,000 a day. You could make $500 a day. That's very doable. Even that is enough for some people to live. It's hundred grand a year or more. But either way, you have to start somewhere. If you're losing, then, then you're losing. You have to turn that around to be something positive, and that's what helps you get the conviction in the market. You have to make 1000 a month to make 2000 3000 to make six, six to make 10 10 to make 20 You see it. You have to be consistent. Start from scratch. Whatever you can afford to risk is where you need to start. Even if it's $100 per trade, you've got to start somewhere, okay? And then you can move up with your goals. But either way, it's about the quality. You just can't lose a lot if you want to make any money at all. And you've got to focus. And it's just really not about taking lots of trades. It's about quality, not quantity. And some days you have to take a day off. Like I said, I didn't do anything to that. 
So the plan of action is, number one, trade only gold and gas are rated according to the 26-point rating system, so you have a high rate of success in direct directional bias, whether long or short. Number two, you get the best entry you can with precision early in the morning, because I have to get in early, to get the good risk-reward trades, and that's how you get the good entries. And number three, you create a money management plan for yourself to achieve your goal of making $20,000 a month, and if you are not at the point where you can afford to risk four or $500 a trade now, then put a plan of action to afford what you can risk now, so that in six months from now, or whenever you can, you build up your account that you can risk more. So my class teaches the rating system, the entries, how to play the stock at the exits. It teaches how to read institutional positioning in stocks, and it teaches you how to day trade gaps. But as I said, you can do them for swing trades or option trades too. I have a highly profitable system. I've been trading for eight years. I've had the business now for four. I have very successful traders who are in my live trading room that have done the class and know how to do it, and they're there with me because they like my calls. And the room is only open to join if you have done my class. Again, people have to be serious about trading. But you can earn good money in the market. It is very early in the year. It's only March. So if you set your goal and say, well, by the end of the calendar year 2016, I want to make X, Y, Z amount of money, you can do it. It's just about working smarter, not harder. And this is why I'm saying, think about some of these terminologies that you hear out there are used as traders. There are, there are things that people, that traders have made up. It's not something that really makes common sense. The common sense is, who's moving the market? Who's moving stocks? Okay? It's... It's just, a, you know, the end of last year happened. A lot of people may or may not have made their financial goals for the year. But it's only the beginning of March. You have the entire year, 10 months left, to make the kind of money you want to make. If you have a full-time job, you could trade part-time on the side. My, my strategy, I only trade in half an hour a day between 9.30 and 10. But you've got to start from somewhere. Or in a year from now, you'll be the same place where you're at last year at the end of the year if you didn't achieve your goals. And particularly if you're losing. If you're losing trading and lost money last year, you have to do something to turn that around. Don't let half the year drift by and you're doing the same thing. I only say to people, how badly do you want it? I wanted to make money in the market very bad. And more than that, I wanted to change careers. I was sick and tired of the mortgage industry. I wanted something to do something that had unlimited income potential. And trading does. And that's one of the reasons I love it. And at the time, I did mortgages for years. I made a lot of money, and it had unlimited income potential, but then the banking industry changed, and the writing was on the wall, and I was never going to have that unlimited income potential again, which trading it does. And as time goes on, I keep getting better. And now this year, in the last few months, I've been doing options using my system, and I've had some huge trades. So you really do have to want it. But, you know, maybe this can be your year. Like I said, it's still early in the year. You can still figure it out. Now, I am doing a special for everybody that's here, here at the webinar. If you want to learn my method and do the class, the class is this weekend. It's March 5th, which is Saturday, and Monday, March 7th. And everyone that's here at the webinar, if you want to sign up for the class by Friday, which is the 4th, that's the deadline, I will give you the rest of the year free in the live trading room. I normally charge $250 a month for the live trading room after the class. But I'm giving it free for everybody here that's at the webinar today. You've got till Friday if you want to sign up. This is a great deal. You just be in the room and take my trades. And actually, I think being in the room helps you make the money back for the class faster and keeps you disciplined. So if you're interested, email me at melissathestockswish.com to sign up. The registration papers are not on my website for the class. You will have to call me or email me if you want to sign up. So empower yourself today to trade the market or do something different for yourself in your own life to make more money. This idea of making unlimited income doing lots of things in life, I'm all for it, people. You know, even if you have your job and you like your job, it doesn't mean you can't day trade on the side. What if that job is something that isn't going to be the same in 10 years? I wish that I had learned how to trade even while I was making money doing mortgages. And then when the mortgage industry fell apart, I would have known how to do something else right away. You should be doing lots and lots and lots of things to help yourself, to empower yourself, to be financially strong. This idea of just saying, well, why am I doing this? you got to do it all, okay? You need to be strong-willed, strong-minded, and be out there in the world. Banks are not lending money to people anymore unless you look absolutely perfect. Strong financially, money in the bank, good credit, and you can't rely on outside people like, you know, like the company you might work for to, even if you do a great job for them, to be in business forever. Look at the economy. Look at the world. You've got to empower yourself to take it upon yourself and take charge, to keep yourself strong financially and to always be ahead okay you need to always be ahead thinking forward thinking ahead 
So my class teaches a system of how to trade gaps. It's all the pieces of the puzzle I need to day trade. It's the only thing that I do. It teaches the entries, the exits, and how everything sets up. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free, so you can take the class or retake it any time in the future. You only have to sign up for it once. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class is Saturday, March 5th, and then Monday, March 7th, 9 to 5 Eastern. Cost of the class is $39.99. I'm teaching the bearish class here for this weekend, okay? The live day trading we're going to do on Monday with gap analysis. And again, if you sign up by Friday, you get the room free to the end of the year. That is huge, huge, because it really helps people make the money back for the class by being in the room with me and taking my trades. So you can email me if you want to sign up for that. I also have a trends course. This is more about long-term day trading and looking at charts in the longer term. It's 12 to 3. It's next week. Cost of this class is $9.99. Email me if you want to sign up for this, but this doesn't teach you how to day trade. This is about doing long-term swing trades and looking at long-term uh, trends and charts. And again, I'm offering the trends class and the golden gap class. If you want to sign up for both, I'm giving half off the trends class. You can do both and save $500. And if you sign up by Friday, you get the year free in the room. So it's a great deal. Now, does anyone have any questions? Okay, let me go back here and see. I just, there's, let's just start from the beginning here. Uh, class is $39.99, Don and JW. You can, I, I, I believe you can only go long in a retirement account, Marvino. So you couldn't, you can't shorten a retirement account. But like you can buy puts, which is like an option because it's a buying. I believe you cannot shorten a retirement account. So you'd have to only do bullish gaps. So you could do them, but you'd have to only do the longs. Uh, looking forward to learning from me. Thank you, Adam. What about hitting the high market crashes? What's the question? If the market hits the high, will it crash? Is that your question? If the market hits the high, it's going to make a brand new high. It's not going to crash. And by the way, if we were going to crash, let me tell you something. We would have done it by now. We would have done it by now. We came down and retested that anomaly day twice. If we were going to crash in the market, we would have crashed by now. Boom. Done. It's not going to happen. Don't even think it's going to happen. That's traders out there. That's that trader mentality. Oh, it's going to crash. Oh, it's going to crash. It's been so hard to go long. It's been so hard to go long. I can't make any money going long. We're going to crash. wrong -o. The most profitable trade I had this year actually was in Amazon and Google as option trades in the month of January when the market was falling. <laughs> I, I just, you know, the market is not going to crash. And if you say that or talk like that, you have to like delete all the trader mentality in your head and reset yourself. Um, let me just see. I understand you're just using gaps. You feel there's more to it. More to what? I'm day trading the gaps. I'm playing the gap, playing the gap on the live day. Of course, there's more to it. I mean, that's why the class is 16 hours. Um, about volumes in a five-minute chart in pre-markets, if you have a large volume up or down in a five-minute chart, is institutional money being used? I don't know what you mean by large. At least that's what you've read. Does this go along with what you're doing? It kind of makes sense to me. It's not that simple. I'm, I'm looking for volume, but I don't live and die by volume. As I said, my volume requires are usually on the live day. On the live day, I'm looking for at least three to 400,000 in the, in the average volume of the charter. I'm not going to do it at all. In the morning, I, I'm not looking. Uh, something has to have more than a couple ticks, because if it doesn't, then it may not be really gapping. In other words, if I don't have any volume in something that has one tick, then I'm not going to watch it to trade in the open, because I have to have volume to take the trade. If I take a trade and it doesn't have enough volume on the live day and I put in a stop, guess what? What are the chances that stop's going to hold? Zip. And if I take three, 4,000 shares of something, even if I have a stop in it, it's going to blow through my stop. And then I'll lose X, Y, Z amount of money. So I have to have volume in the stop in the morning at least or on the live day to trade it. It's not necessarily in a five-minute bar because you go to a five-minute bar with volume and then it may not open with volume. Uh... In general, I would say 70 to 75% of my trades are profitable. One of the people in the room tracked my trades last year, uh, Boots, and he's been trading with me for more than a year. He's a rich child gentleman. He said my, my win ratio is 80%. I said, okay. You know, like I said, I don't have all my trades on the website, but I'm being conservative here. I say over 70%. But I had someone in the room track my trades last year, and he said it was, they were 80%. 
Uh, let me just see here. What windows would be open on a typical dating, a trading day? Just see my charts. That's all I look. I just look at charts. I think I've got all the questions. Does anybody have any other questions here? I think I got everything. I think I got everything from everyone. Good group of people here today. Good group. Uh, let me see. I, like I said earlier, I'm getting the stocks from just my platform, which has a top 20 list of downs and ups in both exchanges. You could buy a scanner if you want. I think it's just, it's just double. But if you want to buy a scanner, fine. But it's on every platform should have a top list, which is 40 stocks in either direction in both exchanges. Uh, I'm in the middle of a process of changing charting software. To be honest with you, I'm not happy right now with either one that I'm using, which is Sterling from a live platform and Orbis for my charts, which I've used for years, but they have a delay. And Sterling has been, happy, has been malfunctioning. So I'm in the process, probably I'm going to switch. I don't know if I'm going to switch to DOS or eSignal for charts and switch to a DOS platform for my live platform. I might go to Realtek. I, I'd say go with whoever you're using right now because Sterling has been having outages on their servers and Orbis right now has a 60 second delay. So I am in the process right now of changing. Between now and April 1st, I will have a completely different setup. There's nothing I can do. If things aren't working right, you have to switch. And I've, I've, I've been, you know, I'm giving people chances to fix, to correct the issues so far. It, it, it's been, I've had an outage like three times a week. Three times a week, my charts are freezing. So go with whoever works for you, because you got to have charts that work. And I, you know, I'm having problems with both the charts that I'm using. And I haven't had a chart, a problem with Sterling for eight years. And all of a sudden now, in the last two months, it's freezing up on me. Uh, show an example of your entry and exit in a one-minute chart. Here, we'll go back. We did that on the on back here. Hold on. Boom. Your short car there, stop over the high, and wherever you want to get out of it. But the target was 24. But you see here, it just kept going. In an ideal world, I create my own software system and platform and charts. That's probably, I'd say, could be five to ten years from now, but in an ideal world, I know exactly what I want in charts. If I, if I had one, if I had one charting service that I could say is absolutely fabulous, I'd be talking, talking, talking all about it. I haven't found it yet. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe I have to invent it. <laughs> the offer for the free time in the room is through the end of Friday, and you got to sign up by Friday anyways because the class is Saturday and Monday. Okay. So good job, everybody, today. Email me if you would like a trial to the room. You can trial the room the rest of the week. There's only two days left, but you could trial the room for the next two days. Email me at melissathestockswish.com if you have any more questions or if you want to trial the room for two days. And this is a great special offer. Just be in the room with me and take my trades till the end of the year for free if you sign up for the class. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dan.